Hey, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you. Actually, I can't see you. We've done a few videos on this channel about using postcards and typewriters. Let's say you're out on a trip, a car trip, a vacation somewhere, and you want to send a postcard to somebody. You want to typewrite a note on the postcard. Well, the solution that uh, we've been using for a while here has been these Avery 6874 labels. And these labels allow you to type on the label in a typewriter, like an ultra portable kind of typewriter, and then peel this label off and stick it to the left hand side of the postcard, the side where you would normally write your note. And the reason why this is important, obviously, is because with many typewriters, not just ultra portables, a lot of bigger size typewriters, you just can't roll a postcard through the machine. And a lot of postcards are actually rather stiff. They don't really bend all that well. So uh, I've really been enjoying this uh, postcard writing, and I've been on a little kick with trying to catch up with my pen pals. And some of you guys out there are pen pals of mine and know that I've been sending some postcards recently. But uh, I recently got a postcard from one of my pen pals. This is a really cool Pacific Northwest card. This was from Michael, and he is a correspondent of mine. And uh, he sent me a card that had a thermally printed note, a thermal typewriter note. And this was kind of an experiment of his. And what he did with this is he actually used an adhesive on the back of the thermal paper to stick it to the postcard. He was curious as to whether it was going to go through the mail properly without the thermal paper becoming discolored or darkened or whatever due to the handling process of the Postal Service. Well, it actually came through pretty good. There was only a few little dark streaks up near the top, probably from some kind of pressure roller that has to do with the uh, cancellation symbol that they cancel it with up there. But overall, it actually worked quite well, and I was surprised. So let's talk about thermal typewriters and postcards, shall we? Well, I've traveled on vacations and trips uh, quite a bit with typewriters. Uh, we took a big Western US trip back in 2015. I took my Hermes Rocket and uh, with the idea that I wanted as little room as possible taken up by the typewriter. Well, in a car trip, it's not really as critical. I could have taken a larger typewriter. But it's nice to travel with a small, light typewriter. And if you're thinking small and light, nothing really beats small and light like a thermal typewriter. They really are the smallest typewriters. This EP20 uh, is probably the smallest thermal typewriter. The round, I would suspect, pretty close to it. Although the keys are more like calculator style keys. Here is a Canon Type Star 4. This is one of the bigger thermal typewriters, but weight-wise with the batteries, it's probably on par, maybe a little bit less than a Hermes Rocket. Footprint's a little bit uh, bigger, however, but it's still very easy to carry in a shoulder bag. Uh, so the nice thing about these thermal typewriters is if you're out in public somewhere on your trip, you go to your little coffee shop or wherever to, to type up a note, uh, they're almost entirely dead silent. Uh, they're not going to make any noise. They're not going to irritate or bother anybody. So that's a nice thing. But as I indicated earlier, you just can't roll a postcard into any old typewriter. And of course, postcards don't have thermal printing paper. So you're going to have to uh, think about what kind of paper to use. Well, if you go the inexpensive route, you can buy these rolls of thermal fax paper. They're eight and a half inch wide in the United States, available through big box office retailers like Staples. I think Staples sells a six pack of these rolls. And uh, I'm using actually one of those rolls to prop up this uh, EP20 typewriter. And I have it in a little cardboard holder uh, that uh, with a rubber band. And I just put it behind the machine and deploy the paper out here. So this is OK paper. But the thermal fax paper in the rolls, especially the Staples brand, is very thin. It is a thin, thin paper. And you know it's just for fax use. If, and so I don't know. We'll try it. Uh, there is a bigger type of thermal fax paper that comes in a roll. Bigger, I mean to say thicker. I think it's a Brother brand, and I believe I got this off of eBay, and I don't really have a link right now to it. Uh, Brother also sells these 8.5 inch by 11 inch packs. It's the LB36. 
3635 lb 3635 brother uh eight letter size eight and a half by eleven thermal paper once you uh take it out of the foil pouch it's in a cardboard uh, pouch like that. I leave this pouch in my thermal typewriter carrying bag. And so that's a thicker kind of paper also. Has the feel and texture of a glossy printed magazine paper. You know that feel? Kind of a thick and kind of glossy feel. That's what it feels like. So this is pretty good paper. So I have three thermal typewriters in my collection. The EP20, the Canon Type Star 4, and the EP43. Now of all three of these machines, my personal favorite lately has been the EP43. It has the uh, better style keyboard like the T Canon Type Star, but in a footprint package smaller than the Type Star, more like the EP20. Yeah, I like the, the ergonomics, the weight, the design of it, and the fact that this is powered by C-cell batteries instead of D-cells means it's actually a little bit lighter. But there's one fault in this machine that it does not have a direct print mode. Direct print mode is whenever you hit a key, it immediately prints it to thermal paper. What this machine does is it buffers the first 15 characters through the LCD display before it prints. That is good in the sense that it gives you the ability to edit as you're writing. If, it, if the text is still in the display, you can edit it. Once it passes out of the display, it prints it. Now in terms of print quality, the Brother EP20 uh, prints a rather primitive dot matrix style character where you can see every little dot of the letter. It looks like an early dot matrix impact printer kind of style. Whereas the Type Star 4 gives a better quality uh, character and it also has two fonts. It has a Courier 10 that's going to be mono spaced, but it also has a, another font that is variable spaced letters. And I think I'm going to select that for the postcards. I should be able to fit more characters on a line since it's not a mono spaced typeface. And that's going to be important when you're typing in a small areas, uh, half the size of a postcard, right? So roughly three inches by four inches. Well, the next question is going to be, how do we attach the thermal paper to the backside of a postcard? Well, obviously some kind of adhesive would be necessary. Well, I was thinking about this. Yeah, I could carry a little thing, a glue stick or whatever, but uh, I bought at my local Staples. Uh, they have these uh, cartridges of roll-on double-sided tape. They call it glue tape. They had a 3M brand that was the tape was actually decorative, had decorative patterns in it, which I don't know why you would want that with double-sided tape since you're going to sandwich it between two pieces of paper. You won't see the decoration. Anyways, that tape was kind of expensive. This was the Staples brand. Now, I've never tried this before, and it's, not, it's an unopened package. I've had good luck with Staples brand correction tape. I actually like the correction tape of Staples better than some of the Bic Whiteout brands, the mainstream brands. So... Uh, let's open this up and see if I can do this without causing a, a sudden visit to the emergency room. It looks like a correction tape cartridge, but it's wider or thicker. It is 8 millimeters wide and it's 10 meters of tape. Let's try that. I have a 4 by 6 inch piece of uh, cardstock, sort of simulates a postcard. And uh, so let's get some paper into the Canon Type Star 4 and uh, Type a little note and see if I can plaster it onto my fake postcard. Here is the Canon Type Star. We'll turn on the power. I think I'm going to use the Staples um, brand of thermal fax paper in the rolls. And so I'm just going to deploy it out of this little cardboard holder. This stuff is pretty thin, by the way. So I'm going to make a note with a mechanical pencil of the width of my writing. And uh, then I, I'm going to be doing it so that we're going to be printing the letters crosswise to the postcard. So the lines will go this way. Makes it a little bit longer of a line. I'm just going to mark this something like that with my, I'll use my postcard as a ruler, as a scale. And this uh, Staples brand paper is so thin that you could almost cut it 
with the mechanical pencil itself will score the paper. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put this thermal typing on the left half of my fake postcard. Let's get our correction tape cartridge, and I've never really used this before. And this fax paper is pretty darn thin. And you also have to roll this and not get it off the edge of the paper. So I'm being a little bit... Uh, this is the first time I've ever used it. Okay. Slightly sloppy here, but let's see here. So now the trick is, can we adequately, accurately lay it down? And I think so. I think this works just fine. Now, this paper is so thin, you might be able to tell there's a slight wrinkle in the middle like that, so I probably should have put a little strip of the tape along the, the middle of the back side. And yeah, I did get a little bit of adhesive here as I was being sloppy. You probably shouldn't use your postcard as your backing material. But hey, there it is. It looks like it works. So we could go practice again on this side, and we have a couple more to practice with also. Okay, so let's try this brother letter-sized thermal paper. The thermal side is up as you take it out of the pack, at least according to my note here. Okay, let's take our fake postcard and figure out what our paper size needs to be. So I'm just going to mark it and uh, probably roughly halfway like that. And I can just use the uh, postcard as a straight edge. So if you're doing a number of postcards, uh, you can actually uh, mark out individual rectangles on the paper and then print all your letters in one go, uh, type them up before you cut each individual piece out. Okay, all right, let's see if I can slip this in here, and there's the right margin. Okay. All right. We'll type a letter to Aunt Flossie. Do you have an Aunt Flossie? We are doing fine. All right. So part of the problem with the direct print mode is if you make any mistakes, of course, you're not going to be able to correct them easily. And so we do have a few typographical errors on this pretend postcard note. But hey, that's just part of the fun of it. Does Joe get more adept at the glue stick? The glue dispenser. Oh yeah, I'm doing it on the side of the paper that already got glue on it. So that's kind of weird. Yeah, I think I like this glue dispenser better than glue sticks. Uh, glue sticks can be kind of messy at times. I think this is a little bit neater. Okay, let's see if we can do this properly. Do the middle of the paper first so you don't make a bubble. Hey, that's went on pretty good. Okay, I like this thicker paper definitely better than the thin thermal fax paper. This is the Brother EP43. It does not have a um, direct print mode, but I am going to have to set it to the density. I want to make the density bold. Okay, so I have a little printing area already lined out here in mechanical pencil. Okay. I'm going to have to set my margins. This typewriter does not have a direct print mode, but it does have the correction in the LCD display. Not too bad. I overran the right margin. Someone's going to have a really fun postcard.
Aunt Millie's going to be surprised when she hears from us, isn't she? Now, if all you have is a thermal typewriter like the EP43 Brother that doesn't have a direct print mode, it still works. As you can see, I'm still able to do it. And the big mistake that I made on this one was I simply didn't know how to set my margins properly. I didn't refer to the owner's manual because my three machines all use different methods. In the case of the EP43, you have to hold down the second shift key and like the left margin set and then use the cursor arrows to drive the margin to where you want it. So kind of non-intuitive. I didn't read the manual. Anyways, so it is possible to use these typewriters like the EP43 that don't have a direct print mode. You'll just have to manage that what they call the hot zone. I think it's within the last six characters of the right margin is if you type a space or a hyphen it'll automatically do a carriage return and return the carriage back to the left. So that might cause you to waste a little space on the right margin because you might have room for another short word and you were just doing the space between the word and it's going to do the carriage return prematurely. So there is a way with EP43 to have it ignore temporarily that hot zone sensitivity. But you'll have to manage that yourself and refer to your owner's manual. Let's try the Canon Type Star again. Switch. And this time, I'm going to use the paper that already has a corner cut out of it for the last note. I'm going to thread it in with this side up. I've already marked the lines for my next card. So let's see if I can thread this in here. It looks like it threads just fine, actually. Take out the paper here. Not too bad. I like the look of it. Well, this was a kind of a fun little thing, and I really want to thank Michael for his postcard and for kind of spurring me on into thinking about thermal typewriters and postcards. It's a cool project. So you're going to need some things to do this, especially if you're out on the road. You're going to need some scissors if you're going to be doing this. If you're flying, especially in the United States, you'll have to get TSA-approved scissors. Which I don't know what those are. Are these like school kid scissors? And uh, I would advise bringing a little mechanical pencil along. Of course, it helps to have the double-sided adhesive tape cartridges. I think that's the better way of going, uh, as, especially for travel. And then you're going to need a supply of postcards. Now, of course, if you're traveling, you're going to probably buy postcards at your destination, but it's nice to stock up on a, uh, a supply of postcards like I've been doing. I've gotten a lot of these postcards from my local uh, Gorilla Graphics is a local graphic arts place here in Albuquerque that puts out some really fun, unique postcards. Here's one of my favorites from Gorilla Graphics is the Billy the Kid done up with the Andy Warhol style of <laughs> graphic arts. That's fun. And then here is the uh, Breaking Bad photo collage card and of course the Better Call Saul lawyer advertisement postcard is pretty funny too. And the other thing you can do, though, uh, with this is little note cards instead of postcards. Now, these are the typewriter notes. These come with their own envelopes, but the cards themselves are nicely printed, and they're just thick enough where you don't want to really roll them through a ma manual typewriter. So I think these are also a good candidate for putting an adhesive label in here, a letter, or you could just type an insert letter, fold it, and stick it in the card. Yeah, I think of the three thermal machines I have, I really think the Canon Typestar 4 with its variable spaced typeface really is the nicest looking typeface. It fits the most amount of text into a given line, makes it pretty readable also. Whereas the uh, Brother EP43, though it's a really nice machine, it has a mono spaced uh, it looks more like courier kind of style, so not quite as efficient in terms of getting letters on paper there. So um, that might be a factor for you in terms of how much writing you want to do on half of a postcard. So that might determine which thermal machine you might want to get and use for postcards. Well, again, I want to thank my friend Michael for sending me this nice postcard and for inspiring me to think about thermal typewriters for use with postcards. Yes, it is perfectly doable. I do recommend any of these thermal typewriters work fine, actually. Um, I recommend the letter type brother paper rather than the rolls. It seems to be a higher quality, thicker paper, and it's a little bit easier to cut the individual sheets out into individual size segments for typing on postcards. There's all 
three of my machines didn't have any problem threading up a partially cut sheet of paper. So something for you guys to think about if you're curious about thermal typewriters. I think they're great travel machines because they're so light and small and quiet. And yeah, you can get them to work with postcards. Well, leave your comments, suggestions, ideas down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, have yourselves a great day and stay creative. Bye-bye for now.